We are going to go into some meat, so I hope you are ready. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12. Isaiah 14 from verse 12. Hallelujah. I want us to read it together. Are you ready? Yes. One, two, three. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou should be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? One more time. From the top. <laughs> Twelve. One more time. Yeah, from 12. One, two, three. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. You may sit in the heavenly places. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, uh, if you're sitting on your mouth, I will stop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now hear me by the spirit of God. There is a difference between being anointed, being appointed, being called by God, being sent by God. All these capacities are functioning based on the grace endowed upon you. Please, let's cut the air. It's already cold. LA has become Seattle. It's gloomy and rainy. We don't need any more cold in here. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Yes. Every calling of God functions based on the grace endowed upon you. No man or woman can function beyond the grace that is given unto them. And whenever a man or a woman desires to step out of what God has given them, that is where failure begins. And that is where you begin to become a danger to the purposes and to the kingdom of God. So when God calls you, the first thing that God does is he permits you to operate with the grace that he has given you. Believe me, the grace that God gives is sufficient to take you from one place to the next place. And it is enough to finish what God gave you to do. I wish I would hear better. Amen. Amen. But there is another dimension of functionality that is preserved for those who have learned the system of the spirit, for those who have come to understand the ways of the spirit, for those who have known God, who is shrouded in darkness, God who is covered in clouds, there is another realm that is ordained for those who will understand this and those who comprehend how to enter into that place. Now, if you read this, people focus on the fall of Satan, but they don't focus on what Satan wants to enter into to become a certain way. Mm. Come on. I'm starting to go somewhere. There is something that Satan wanted that was not accorded to him. And it was not accorded to him because Satan knew about it when he discovered it. He did not always know it. But when he discovered it, he wanted to get it the wrong way. And because he wanted to get it the wrong way, he was kicked out of the very presence of God. And his falling weakened the nation, meaning that he, the fall of Satan is what destroyed mankind. This is why God did not call you to be on earth. He said you are seated in heavenly places. 
So anyone that is grounded, even if you're anointed, you will suffer. Come on. Come on. Let me, I'm trying to find somebody I can talk to. I feel like it went over your head. Let me say it one more time. He's falling to the ground, weakened the nations. But remember what the Bible says about us. It says you are in the world but not of it. Because Jesus ascended, we are also have ascended. And we are seated where? In heavenly places. So what weakens the nation cannot weaken you. Come on. Uh, Good. Let me find somebody that can understand this. So Satan knew, according to the angelic realm, cherubims belong in a certain realm and a certain dimension. But he was a cherubim that was not, even though the Bible says, you are perfect from the day you were created until iniquity was found in you. Even when he was created, he was not placed in the high realms of cherubims. He was set in the lower class. Mm. He did not begin by being high. So it is weird that a cherubim who are creatures who are custodians of the presence of God he is starting from the bottom and seeing that others are high and he starts to say wait it should not be like this I'm gonna ascend too but what was he seeking that was going to establish him in the high realms that same thing he was seeking is the same thing that you also need, but you don't know. But by the Spirit of God today, it is revealed to you. Amen. Amen. Uh, especially those who are clapping, amen. amen. May you be unlocked to what we are going to speak about. See. Now notice what he said. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the Most High. Wait. Why is he saying, I will ascend above the clouds? Above the heights of the clouds. Meaning there is a realm of clouds. And there is a representation of clouds in the spirit. That when Satan's eyes were open to it, he knew. When I can enter into the clouds, then I can become like the most high. Let me show you something, then you'll understand what I'm saying. Matthew 20, Matthew 17. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Uh, actually, no. Matthew 26. Matthew 26 and 64. Matthew 26 and 64. Now remember, when the Lord Jesus was on earth, many saw him to be a human being. But Jesus is telling them, me, I am not a human. I am God. But how did he tell them, the day you will see me to know that I am God? What did Jesus say? He said, Jesus said unto them, Thou said, nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in what? Clouds. So Jesus said, the day you will know that I am God is when you will see me coming with clouds. Come on. You're still not Come getting on. I think it went over your head. <laughs> Satan is saying, I will ascend above the clouds. Then I will be like the Mosai. Because he had seen Jesus. Come on. Ah. Ah. Teacher, prophet. Now, Jesus is saying, he came like a human. He said, wait. You will see me coming. And the day you will see me coming, you will see me coming with clouds from on high. Now, this realm <laughs> is available Touch your neighbor, say, it's available. It's available. Not just for the Lord Jesus, because the Lord Jesus was, he came to be the firstborn of many brethren. Meaning what he has, we also have a privilege too. This is why it says, on the day that Jesus will come, he will come with the multitude of those who are in heaven. When we will be caught up, those who are on earth, where will we be caught up in? The clouds. People think in the sky. No, it's talking about the clouds. It's a realm. Wow. Come on. Come on. Come on. Some of you are still missing it. I, I wish you could understand it. But here is the good news. 
The cloud does not just appear on the last day. You can walk with the cloud right now. Amen. Can you give me more volume on my microphone, please? You can, <laughs> you can encounter the cloud now. Amen. You see, what makes you different as a child of God is this. Is the dimensions that you walk in. You see, so many people love anointing. I love the anointing too, but you only anointed once. I love the Holy Spirit too, but you're only filled. And when you're filled, that's the end. You don't go beyond being filled. But there are realms that now, instead of just being filled, there is another portion. Remember, the Lord Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. But the Lord Jesus was not transfigured when the Holy Spirit came upon him. Some of you are still not getting it. We are going somewhere. Matthew 17 from verse 1. After six days, Jesus take Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bring them up into the high mountain apart, <laughs> and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment as white as the light. You see, the reason why you're still not shining, you have not discovered that it is in the cloud that God makes you shine. Amen. Come on. It is in the cloud. Let me find, let me talk to overflow. Where are the people in the overflow? Good. I'm trying to talk to somebody who is ready to shift. Yes. Ah. So they saw Jesus changed in front of them. The Holy Spirit came. Jesus was powerful. Filled with the Spirit. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. But when the cloud came, Jesus was a different person. He did not look the same anymore. His clothes changed. His face changed. I don't know if you can capture me. Are you sure you are capturing this? And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias with him. Notice, there is a dimension you enter. There's a part in the, I love this verse. It says this. They be a great cloud of witnesses that is always watching us. Have you ever read that? Yes. Have you ever read that? Do you know why you don't have encounters with prophets? You don't have encounters with angels? You have not entered the cloud. You look at your jealousy. Let me find somebody I can talk to. <laughs> look at your own jealousy. You see, fear, you see, especially in deliverance circles. Listen, I, I've been doing deliverance since I was six. And I, I, let me just say this, congratulations, America and Western world. You are seeing what Africa has been seeing forever. This is normal to us. But we thank God that you have also entered into what is, Amen. Amen. what is the norm. So when people are having arguments of deliverance, it's really funny to us because we're like, ah, you're still here. <laughs> but nevertheless, we praise the Lord because it is the doing of God. Are, are, you, are you capturing what I'm saying? It's the doing of God. You see, in deliverance circles, I have never seen people who are more fearful than those who claim to have deliverance ministers. Ah, I have never seen more superstitious people. Many times even more superstitious than witches and wizards. People in deliverance circles. Yet they should be the ones that trample over serpents and scorpions. Amen. They walk in more superstition and fear. More than anyone. Ah. <laughs> ah, you wore that brand. It has a snake. That's how demons are. You have opened that door. Didn't God create snakes? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wish God would just give snakes power to talk. They will say, Father, our reputation is destroyed since the one in the garden. <laughs> Yet God tells you, be wise as a what? Serpent. Amen. 
But you think of snakes and you think about demons immediately. Can the devil use snakes? Yes. But was he the first one to use snake? No. Who created them? God. Black cat. So did God make a mistake? Who created these things? Did Satan do it or God? They have demonized everything. Everything, everything is demonized. You can't do anything anymore. You can't go out and eat. What if that place is dedicated to witches? The Bible says you shall eat even out of what? Paul said you can go to the temple and Hindus will give you food. Because of where you are in Christ, it will do nothing to you. Come on. Come on. But because we have spiritual babies with microphones, Come on. they want to scare you every day. Yet you should walk with the confidence knowing that I am anointed by God. Paul said it. If it was not written and I said it, you would demonize me. But Paul said it. He said, because you know better, if they see you eating food dedicated to idols, they may stumble. So don't show them, but know that it has power. But because they prayed for one or two people who went, Bleh, they say, you see, they ate witchcraft. Don't. <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? I have made more people throw up in my life since I was a child. I know what I'm talking about. But these superstitions is because we have not entered into greater realms of the spirit of greater understanding of the ways of God. I saw even people saying, ah, yeah, yeah. listen, me, myself, there's a day, I don't know, uh, uh, Tish, you remember, uh, what is his name? Uh, the guy who used to work for us in 2M, he, Jimmy, what was Jimmy's brother? Do you remember Jim? Joseph. You remember when I bought the carpet and the guy went crazy? I remember I bought one day, I went and I bought a carpet for my bedroom. And when we were laying it down, and, you, and we were laying it down, it had like a, like a tiger kind of symbol. You remember it? Yes. So, <laughs> so while we are laying the carpet down, we are laying the carpet down. It had like me, I like martial arts, things like that. He had a beautiful, yeah, it had, you even remember that you are deep. <laughs> it had a beautiful tiger-like thing on there. Me, it never affected me. I got it, put it in there. Ah, this guy put the carpet down. He looked at it. Something jumped into him. No, I'm telling you the truth. All of a sudden, I told him, Jimmy, leave. Because I saw it. My eyes were open. And I saw it. I said, Jimmy, leave the carpet. He said, no, 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 no. He went mad instantly. He lost his mind instantly. In seconds. In seconds. I backed up. <laughs> I said, Lord, what do I do? He told me, fold the carpet, take it outside, burn it. And then I went to him and I touched him and his mind was released. He came back to normal. And then we took him to the hospital. <laughs> the, the doctor said, oh, malaria just went to his head. <laughs> me, I'm laughing because I know what happened. So I know. Satan can use things to affect people. I have seen it through my years of working with God. I have seen it. But why didn't it touch me? Why did it not touch me? It touched him because he wasn't even a believer. If it stayed in my room and I actually, because I, I brought the cup and he, and he wanted to lay, I said, no, let, I'll do it myself. No, 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 no. Ah, the guy, laid, when he was just laying it down, I looked and I saw, I saw what happened. Immediately I knew. But here's the thing. You can touch anything if you're a child of God. That God permits you and it will be neutralized. But there are things also God will not allow you. He will tell you, get rid of it. But that should not make us live in fear. Amen. Because we don't protect ourselves. He is the one Amen. who protects us. Amen. So, so hear this by the Spirit. Hear this by the Spirit. When you start tapping into the realm of clouds, it's a high realm because that's where God dwells. 
Are you listening to me? And I saw clouds surrounding the Lord. That's where God dwells. In thick clouds. That's where God is. So when you start interacting with that realm through prayer, through your pursuit of God, there is something that happens. You start having encounters. But if you love deliverance ministry, Moses will appear to you, you will bind him. De dead people appear to you. Fire! Yet Jesus said, don't you know that, don't you remember what God said to Moses? He is the God of Abraham, Jacob. These men are not dead. And the Bible says they were astonished by his doctrine. But you have been taught everyone that died went to hell. Or if you see the dead is bad. That's not true. Jesus was hanging out with Moses and Elijah. Moses died. Okay, you can say Elijah was taken. But Moses was, was dead. Sat with Jesus, they spoke. The disciples even saw them with their own eyes. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? The, the, the parable of Lazarus, what did, you, what did Abraham say? Abraham said, if they have Moses and the prophet, let them listen to them. So there is a cloud of witnesses that is around the children of God, but you have not been able to enter it. The first benefit of the cloud is this. Your proximity to God changes. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me talk to people who want to hear this. Your proximity to God changes. Number two, you become a transfigured individual. Amen. You see, the Holy Spirit can come into somebody. It doesn't guarantee the person will change. But you cannot have an encounter and remain the same. Amen. This is why we have people in the church. But they are walking in hate and forgiveness. Teacher. I, I, am I not speaking the truth? Speaking the truth. They love Jesus. They will be preaching, but the next minute they'll be like, mm. look at that one. Especially in Africa, they think it's so subliminal. But it's not. Uh, they point with their lips. Look at that one. <laughs> Are you, are you catching me? <laughs> you think they're doing dark face, but they're pointing. <laughs> but encounters. You see, Paul was not changed because the spirit came on him. He had an encounter on his way to Damascus when he was still sore. The encounter... They encountered the cloud. He encountered the cloud. And everything he knew changed in a second. It recalibrated him to receive the spirit of God and to run after God. You are going to begin to walk with clouds. Amen. I receive. I decree and declare it upon everyone that is under the sound of my voice. I receive it. You begin to function with the cloud. I receive. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now let, let, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Verse 4. And answered Peter said, and, and then answered Peter said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou will let us uh, make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. When you walk with the cloud, God begins to brag about you. Amen. He begins to tell people, you cannot deny this one a contract. Amen. This one is my beloved. Amen. You cannot... Amen. See, see. I, I don't know if you can hear what I'm telling you. When you start moving with the cloud, it is God that is testifying about you. God begins to testify about you. Because the voice they heard is the voice of the Father. It's the voice of the Father. 
this is my son. Listen to him. I love him. Listen to him. You see, some of you want to be in places where when you speak, your voice is heard. Anyone that is not walking with clouds, you can never be heard. Wow, that's good. So good. So good. One of the benefits of walking under the cloud of God Almighty is that when you speak to people, people listen to you. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. When you say, let's go left, the whole nation listens. When people say, I am a prophet to the nation and no nation listens to you, eh? you have no clouds. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Zero clouds. <laughs> it is the cloud of God that compels people. God himself will touch people's hearts and tell them, listen, what this one says, listen. What he says, listen. God will move their hearts. They will not hear the voice, but something will come. They will want to deny you, but they cannot. You see, Elijah, before he went to the woman, the Lord said, I have commanded the, the widow to feed you. This woman will feed you. I have commanded her. But when Elijah got there and said, woman, what are you doing? I'm baking my cake so that I may eat and die. He said, feed me. He said, how can I feed you, but I have my son? said, woman, feed me and nothing in your house will lack. Imagine the woman was, yes, baked a cake and fed him with zero guarantee. No, the guarantee was a voice already spoke. Amen. Amen. May the cloud, yes. the cloud of glory go ahead of you. Yes, I receive. May the Lord begin to speak on your behalf. Yes. yes. This is what you're missing. Satan knew I have no influence. You know, and people make it seem like Satan had great influence in heaven. That is the biggest lie. See, sit for two seconds. The spirits that fell with him are spirits that were under him. Yeah. It wasn't spirits that he convinced. That is why the demons that fell are low-ranking demons. Because him himself, he was low. Uh, you didn't hear what I just told you. <laughs> Congolese people, I see you. <laughs> so, so capture this by the spirit. The cloud of glory is where the voice of God is. God will begin to announce you. But he will not only announce you, but he will also convict the hearts of men to hear you. He will make people listen to you. You see, some of you, you have an important message for the world, but no one will listen to you. Unless there is a backing that is divine of God announcing you. Do you realize the Bible says when Jesus left the wilderness, fame of him spread. How can fame spread of somebody who hasn't done anything yet? Something happened when he was in the wilderness. Something shifted when he was in the wilderness. This is somewhere that God wants to take you. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Are you sure you can hear me? Yes. Ah. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice. And the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. Notice the glory of God and the spirit of God are separated. It is a different experience of God. Are, are you listening to me? Yes. You see, in every manifestation of God, it is a different kind of encounter you have. 
If you meet the Son, you have a different encounter. If you meet the Holy Spirit, you have a different encounter. If, you, if the face of God shines on you, it is a different encounter. If His right hand holds you, it is a different encounter. When the glory comes down, it is God Himself, the Father, is sitting in a... Amen. Amen. All these are dimensions of encounters. So Solomon discovered that building a temple was not enough. The Holy Spirit being in the house was not enough. He wanted the glory, tangible. 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 Somebody say tangible. Tangible. I can hear you. Tangible. Now, I will tell you this. Many of you are not having direction. Because you don't realize when the cloud lifts and moves and when it stops. So good. Come on. Come on. Father, give me direction. But you're not sensitive enough to recognize when the cloud stops in a place. When the cloud lifts and moves to another place. You can't detect it. So you remain going around the same mountain saying, Father, show me. You are testing to see what will work. But you have not understood how can I see the glory of God. You see, the glory of God is not always attractive. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to. Exodus 14 from verse 11. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? They did not see the glory. When trouble came, they panicked. They saw Moses, but they did not see a cloud that Moses followed. Verse 12. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone? They never said that. That we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than, than they, that we should die in the wilderness. These are the people who are crying to God. How long? Now they're saying, we never, we, we, we were okay. <laughs> human beings. No human, woman, woman. <laughs> human beings. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter Mamati delivered somebody, and I was sent this video. <laughs> And this person all of a sudden is now also a prophet saying, eh, the witchcraft, listen, we have video evidence. You know now I'll start releasing videos. <laughs> Somebody, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Two weeks later, you're demonizing somebody that delivered you. Yeah. Human beings. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, ye shall see them again no more ever. Verse 14. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall keep or hold your peace. Verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Where have thou Christ unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. You see, when the glory of God is with you, sometimes you don't know if you should move forward. Because it looks like an attack is in one way, and this is closing that way. But there is a cloud that is allowing this to happen to point you to where you should go. Amen. Because God is realizing you have no capacity to see the cloud. Amen. So when he's trying to direct you, you are not catching it. Ah. So God is saying move forward, yet there is a sea. Why is there a push towards what looks impossible? There is a cloud. You are just not seeing it yet. Now watch this. But if thou, 
If, but lift up thy road and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground and thou in the midst of the sea. Verse 17. Before we read verse 17, look at this. Do you know how I know people who are going to step out of the wheelchair? Do you know how I know who is going to be delivered? Do you know how I know who I'm going to minister to? I always see the cloud moving on people. When I see the cloud has come, I know anything I declare here. Even if it is the sea, it will part. Come on. May God give you the grace to see the cloud. I that whatsoever you speak to will come to manifest. I receive. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, sit down for two seconds. This is why sometimes, please don't be angry with me. I know, I know we have a culture, people come with signs, pray for me and this and this. It's good, it's not bad. But sometimes I'll say, please put it down because if you distract me, I will miss the cloud. There's nothing wrong. There's a time you can lift it. There's nothing wrong. Trust me. I am all about that. But don't get offended if I tell you to put it down. I want to see how the cloud will move. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because you may be in the midst of the word of God and you lift it up, it may throw me off. You see, the prophetic requires great attention. Yes. Are you listening to me? If you are divided, you may miss God because God moves in the speed of light. So you have to be able to catch God. Yes. Are you listening to me? So I don't want you to ever get offended when I say, uh, it's, uh, can you put it down? Can you, can you, can you put it down, please? Can you put it down? When I say that, don't get offended. I just, I'm trying to see where the cloud is moving. And if the cloud passes over you, I know your case is done. Amen. 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 It doesn't need any kind of prayer. So God's cloud will move to the one that will ignite other people's faith so that it can move on them also. Amen. And I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians. And they shall follow them. And I will get my honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. Sometimes when the cloud is with you, actually all the time when the cloud is with you, the cloud of God will make your enemies become even greater enemies. It will make those who persecute you, persecute you even more. Because the cloud of glory must be revealed. It is not physical, it is spiritual. So if it is to be revealed, there must be side effects that reveal that the cloud is there. Amen. So God will make them bring out their best weapons against you. Amen. To make them believe they are going to win. They will criticize you, speak against you. They will come after you like the wind. They will come after you like the storm. But the cloud is there. It is actually inciting them to think they can do it. It will harden their heart to think they have something going on. <laughs> Are you here? Yes. He will make them believe that. So that God can show that the cloud is with you. Amen. When they took Joseph, sold him, threw him out. When he entered into Potiphar's house, the cloud showed up. Amen. Your critics and your attackers are pointing you to where the cloud is taking you. Amen. And the same ones that are persecuting you, they will come after you. And they will bow and worship God before you. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 18, look at this. Hey. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten my honor upon Pharaoh. Notice, God wants to prove the cloud is with you. Upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. You see, God doesn't just want to prove himself against the one that was coming against you. He will go after the lies. He will go after the accusations. Every weapon they use and who they use, he will get his glory upon them. Come on. Verse 19 gets sweeter. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, 
removed and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. Notice where the angel moved, the cloud moved. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? And if you know of the angel of the Lord in Exodus that moved with the cloud, it's actually the Lord Jesus that was with them. You know, some of you don't know this. It's actually the Lord Jesus because he's the one that gave them the law. He said, listen to him. If you don't listen, he will destroy you. It was a representation of God himself. It was the son. Are, are you hearing me? <laughs> so the cloud moved from before them and he went behind them and it just looked dark. So they no longer had direction. Let me tell you something. When you feel like you have nowhere to go, just go. Good. I, I don't think you heard what I'm saying. If you feel like you have nowhere to go, you can't go backwards. Just know the cloud moved backwards to do something to your enemy. Amen. So you keep marching. Yes. Verse 21. <laughs> Verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the water were divided. Notice when God was making a way, it was at night. The Egyptians could not see it because the cloud covered their eyes. Their hearts were hardened. So they could not see what God was planning. God hides you and hides the progress in you because he wants the enemy to walk into a trap. Amen. Let me find somebody that will understand what I'm saying. Sometimes you feel like, Lord, why am I hidden for so long? There's a cloud working. There is a setup. Because once you cross over, the ones you are dealing with should never follow you to your next level. Amen. The poverty you experience, you will not experience it again. The hardships you experience, you will not experience them again. The sicknesses you experience, you will not experience them again. You see, sometimes God will allow you to manifest a sickness that families forgot and he was killing people nobody knew. And then God uses you to reveal it so that it can be destroyed so that no one else can have it. Amen. This is why sometimes some of you say, but God, I am praying, why did I get cancer? Because there were cancer cells in your DNA. God is using you so that it can be destroyed. And after you, no one else will have it. God heals you and no one else will. It is removed out of your gene pool. Yeah. Lord, I have been praying. Why am I not seeing the blessing? God has exposed the spirit of poverty. That used to just be there where people are just doing okay. They never go beyond a certain place. They just do fine. So they are comfortable living below. So God will make you suffer, yet you are the one who is praying the more. So that you can kill that dragon that has been eating the wealth of the family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you still here? Yeah. Sit for two seconds. I promise you we are finishing. Deuteronomy 28 verse 7. <laughs> Notice this. Are you ready? Can we read it together? One, two, three. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Notice God will allow them to come. But they don't know they are walking into a trap. When they realize that it was a setup to glorify you, they will scatter not knowing which way to go. And the Lord shall gain glory over the thing. Amen. If you would stand up and clap your hands. And begin to shout, thank you, Jesus. Something will shift in your life. Something has shifted in your life. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Two, two seconds. 
Nahum chapter 1 verse 3. Oh, Nahum. <laughs> the last uh, prophet I had an encounter with was him. And he's supposed to come back again. I'm waiting for God's privilege. He told me if the Lord permits, I'll come back and tell you about the book of scribes. Which is not even here on earth. <laughs> but he taught me a lot of things that day and I'm really privileged by God to have that encounter. It was a, it was a magnificent one. I will never forget it. Now listen to this. The law is slow to anger and great in what? Power. Somebody shout, pa. Pa. Shout it like an African, pa. Pa. <laughs> and will not acquit the wicked. God is not sparing any wicked. Yeah. You know, you didn't hear what I said. He will not acquit them. No wicked is escaping. Amen. Even the person that did this to you. Something will come on them. Amen. No one is escaping. The Lord will not acquit the wicked. Even the one that you... <laughs> then you look at them, they say, hi. No wicked will be acquitted. Are you hearing me? Yes. No wicked will be what? Acquitted. No one is escaping. The Lord has hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. Notice that. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. If the enemy will rush in as a flood, the Lord will raise a standard. If a whirlwind comes to toss your boat to and fro, the Lord will find his way even in that. So when you see a storm, don't think God can't reach you. Amen. Let me talk some real Amen. to somebody. If you see a storm, it doesn't mean God cannot reach you. Amen. If you see a whirlwind, it doesn't mean God cannot get you. He will get where you need to be. He will fight for you where you need to be. And the clouds are the dust of his feet. Meaning when you see clouds moving, know that God is walking. Come on. Hey, Come on. Hey, hey, somebody hey. missed it. Yeah. When you see clouds, you just need to know that God has a... You know, there's a song that uh, uh, my mama Onyango loved, loves to sing. I don't know if she still loves to sing it. Let God arise, his enemies be scattered. Uh. His enemy be scattered. Africans know this one. Uh huh. Let God, let God. Uh, sing it one more time, one more time. May God arise, his enemies be scattered. Let God arise, his enemies be scattered. Let God arise, his enemies be scattered. Let God, let God arise. Notice, hear this. When you see clouds, God has stood up. Amen. They are dust. It means God is moving. That is why the Lord Jesus said this. He said, you shall see the Son of Man coming, not has arrived. When he's coming, you see clouds. Why? Because it is the dust of God. Amen. Amen. I see God moving for you. Amen. I see God moving for you. I receive. I see God moving for you and moving for you and moving for you. I receive. Now, I'll give you two points quickly that will help you to move with the cloud of God. How can you invite God to come into your life with the manifestation of the cloud of glory? Number one, Uncle Solomon just taught us. Be a sacrificial giver. He didn't just pray, God, fill this place. He offered something before God and he prayed and God had to come down. There is something that God can never resist is a sacrifice offered in purity. God must come. It is the protocol of the spirit that him himself he ordained. When sacrifice is offered in purity... God will come down. That is why I said, try me. If I will not open the floodgates, 
give and see if you, I will not. Notice the only time God said dare him is when you are giving. The only time he said, if you want to see me move and bless you, give and see what I will do. If I will not open, try me. He said, try me. When you become sacrificial in nature, God has no choice but to visit you. You see, Cornelius didn't even know God. He didn't even have the Holy Spirit. He gave too much. He was fasting. The angel of the Lord came, ignored his fasting, and told him, uh, your prayer and your giving and your arms have risen up for a memorial. What? What about my fasting? Don't care. <laughs> your prayer and your giving have risen up for a memorial. So I have come. Can you go get Peter because you have broken the chain? You see, Cornelius skipped stages. He had to be brought back. The man had done what somebody that is not in his level, he should have never known what he knew. You see, angels cannot lead you to receiving Jesus. It is not their duty. Jesus didn't die for them. So they can't preach to you, receive Jesus. They can't. If you want to know somebody that is uh, speaking about encounters and it's a lie, an angel told me, be baptized and give your life to Jesus. No. It is not their place. They can't do that. They know of it, those who have interacted with humanity, but it is not their place to preach the gospel. It is not. They will tell you about the Lord, but they can never lead you to salvation. They can't. It is not their calling. Are you hearing me? So what did he do? Look at what he did. He told him, go and find Peter and he will tell you what you need to do. So the man entered into the clouds before time that now he had to be told, can you backtrack first? You have already opened this gate, but we can't deal with you yet. Go and get Peter. He will show you what to do. So you see how when we are sacrificial and we are pure, Pure in our sacrifice to God with a clean intent. Not because I want a 24-hour turnaround. Even though a 24-hour turnaround can happen and God wants to give it to you. But be consumed with the desire and the yearning to worship God. Amen. Be somebody that wants to adore God wants to worship God, wants to love God sacrificially. Sacrificially. With everything that is inside of you. So he showed us how to do that. He didn't just pray. He set up something that God came and consumed and the cloud rested. So the first thing is you have to understand, be somebody that is sacrificial. You notice that Elijah, a powerful prophet, you start hearing the mention of the angel of the Lord after he offered an offering to prove that his God was God and Baal was a fake God. When God came down and consumed the offering, you realize that now Elijah is talking to somebody. The angel of the Lord begins to direct him. Before that, he was operating with the prophetic office, but now something else. There was a cloud that followed him. Something changed. Are you hearing me? Yes. Something changed. Number two, be somebody that engages in prayer. If your prayer life or your prayer walk is seasonal, you are postponing every time you draw close. Draw close unto me and I will draw close unto you. So if I draw away, God also draws away. God doesn't stay there. So cultivating a serious, a very, very serious prayer life guarantees that the cloud of glory will come on you. Amen. What do I mean by prayer life? I don't mean Father, deliver me, Father, save me. Learn to ask him to reveal himself to you. The best prayer you can ever pray is, Father, I want to know you. 
I want to walk close to you. You see, what has made me effective is my prayer is always connected to what he has sent me to do. I don't care what other people are thinking. I don't care. In fact, I don't even watch pastors. The only one I watch is my pops, <coughs> apostle, or bishop. I don't watch people. Mama T, my family, yeah. I don't watch. I don't sit there and see pastor so-and-so said this. Pastor. Don't care. If he's messing up his assignment, that is his. Me, I'm busy with my assignment. Amen. Amen. So I know the closer I draw to God, the better it will be for my assignment. The better it will be for my assignment. The better... Learning to cultivate a serious prayer life that is centered in knowing him. Lord, I want to know you. I want to see you. I want to know your ways. You see, when you shut your ears to the world, you open them up to God. You open your ears to the world, you miss God. This is why there are so many people that love to post six-second clips of men and women of God out of context. Why don't they post the whole message? Because they want you to listen to the world and miss what God has for you. Are, are you listening to me? Yes. When you learn to open your ears to God, you shut it to the world. When you open it to the world, you will miss God. This is why, again, I said that when you are in the presence of God, even though it's no prophetic service, I'm always watching how the cloud of God is moving. And if the Lord speaks, I have to be able to hear him. Because if I don't pay attention, he will speak and I will miss him. And then uh, imagine if I missed God calling Nathan. Specific role, the right place, the right people. Imagine if I missed it. Cultivate a desire that says, Lord, I want to know you. Yes. And just you. Show me your ways. Lead me in the path of righteousness. Show me what. When you cry unto him, you are drawn into where the cloud is. And the cloud is also drawn to you. Yes. When the Lord Jesus said, unless you are in me and I in you, he meant that the cloud must come upon you and you must also be in it. You must be so entangled. When the cloud is upon you, when you speak, it is no longer you speaking, it is God speaking. Amen. Amen. When you command demons, demons will obey you. Amen. You won't need to have one private, you will speak publicly. Everyone that is, ah, they will all get free. You declare miracles, miracles will come to pass. But this realm requires dedication to knowing him. When Moses went into Egypt, he was just anointed. When he came out of Egypt and went to the mountain of God, he said, Lord, if your glory doesn't go with me, don't send me from here. He realized that I've been using what you gave me, but it's still kind of hard. But if you are with me, everything becomes easy. So if you're not coming, I'm not going. Then God said, all right, Moses, build an ark that you can carry me with you. And everywhere where the tent was, God would descend where the tent was and the cloud would cover the place. It became so apparent that other people could see it. Become somebody that walks with glory clouds. Amen. Amen. You see, the Egyptians wanted to see where the Israelites were. Because of the cloud, they couldn't see them. The hiding place of the Mosa is the cloud. When we say, Lord, you are my high tower, we are talking about the cloud because no one can approach it. So if he puts you in there, no one can touch you. The secret place of the Most High, where you are supposed to abide is the realm of the cloud. Somebody from the outside cannot see, but the one who inside can see everything. Today, adding on the prayer of tears that you learned, don't just desire God to answer you, but now you know you can use your tears to tell God, I need you to be with me. Yeah. And when you pray fervently, honestly, truthfully, 
and the cloud comes upon you, you will be transfigured, you'll be transformed, you'll be changed. Everything about you will never, ever, 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 ever be the same again. Amen. So if this is an honest desire, if this is a truthful desire, if it is an honest and earnest desire that says, Lord, I just want you. So that whatever I do, I do for you. Wherever I go, I go for you. If you don't move, I don't want to move. If you don't go, I don't want to go. I want to be where you are. You will never walk in disappointment. Many of the disappointments is because we go where God is not. God says, go left to you, you go right. And then you get there, you say, God, where are you? I didn't ask you to go there. <laughs> God says, turn around you, you turn the other way. And then if, <laughs> I didn't tell you to go there. That's why things are not working out. We struggle because we miss him. But when you learn to spend time in that place of desiring him, there is something that happens. You start to create the sense and the ability to discern the movement of the cloud of God. You begin to know when he moves right. You begin to know when he moves left. You begin to know when he stops. You begin to know when he moves forward. You begin to understand all these things. It becomes apparent. This is what the Lord Jesus wants for each and every one of you. I want you to stand up and I want you to rise up. And I want you to pray, speaking to the Lord, telling Him honestly, Lord, I desire to know you. I desire to walk with you. I desire to never be separated from you. I want to know you in a way that I can walk in the clouds of glory. Lord, I want to see the dust of the Spirit. That where I go, I see you going. I don't want to be separated from you. I am tired of disappointments. I am tired of shortcomings. I am tired of these things. I want the meat of who you are. Like you walked with Moses, you can walk with me. As you manifested to your son Jesus, you can manifest to me. Lord, this is my great hunger. Lord, this is my great desire. Lift your voice and begin to cry to God. Lift your voice and cry to God. Father, I desire to know you. Today. Lift your voice and cry to the Lord. Father, I desire to know you today. Walk with you, God. I desire to I walk desire with to you know today. you, O oh Lord. I desire to know when you your walk cloud with Moses, how oh God, I know that you can walk with me. Cause me to never be I'm separated from you. Lift your voice. Lord. Cause me to never be separated from the Lord. May I know how your cloud moves. Cause me to know you to the point that I am in your cloud. I want to know you, God. I want to know you, I want to know you, God. 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 I want to you, you, Continue to pray. Continue to lift your voices and pray. My desire is to know you today, Lord. To know you today, Lord. To know all your ways, Father. To never be separated from you, Father. To know you to the point that I am in your cloud. I know how your cloud moves. Pray. Lift your voices and pray. Lift your voices and pray. Thank you, eternal Father. Thank you, eternal Father. I want you to declare today before the Lord that if he does not go ahead of you, that you don't want to go. Amen. Amen. That you want to go where he will go. You want to move where he wants you to move. Lift your voice and begin to pray.
Father, if you do not lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice, lift your voice. Lift your voice, lift your voice. Do not go, God, I don't want to go. Hallelujah. Are you here? You're sure you're here? Lift both your hands to him. Father, let there be a mighty visitation. Father, let there be a mighty visitation. A mighty visitation about upon all your people. Let there be a mighty visitation upon all your people. A mighty visitation upon all your people. What you have given them to do, Lord. Let there be a mighty visitation in the name of the Lord Jesus. A visitation that will shift the trajectory of everything you have given them. Take them to a place, Father, that you have called them. Lift them to the place that you have called them. Let there be a shift by reason of the cloud that shall rest upon them. Father, I thank you that it is so. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Are you still here? The Lord is good. Doctor, doctor, how are you, sir? You're well? <laughs> Ma, you're doing well? You're doing well? Amen. Listen to me. God has the utmost love for us. And God wants us to walk and to move in ways that is uncommon. Amen. Paul was an uncommon man with uncommon manifestations. Amen. That is what the Lord also desires for each and every one of us. Amen. Uncommon manifestation of the presence of God. <laughs> Lift up all those family members you have. Lift them up. Whether it's pictures, whether it's... Uh, uh, pictures or or anything even if they're in your heart just position your heart towards God father I pray that your mighty hand will flow through all your people touch those who are sick touch those who are lacking touch those who are suffering show your face unto them reveal your grace upon them deliver them secure them let your mighty hand be revealed over their lives Father, let your cloud descend yes. and let crazy, unspeakable miracles to come to pass. See that people will ask, What kind of God is this? Because of the signs and the wonders that will follow those who are here and those whom they represent. In the mighty name of Jesus, the name of somebody Jesus. shout, Amen. Amen.